and welcome back to OC Avery. This video today is all on the preparation for breeding goldfinch mules. So we're going to take a look at the goldfinch cock I have selected for the pair. Then we're going to take a look at the canary hen I have selected uh, and why I've selected both of those birds. Then we're going to take a look at the expected outcomes of the mules, uh, of the offspring from that pairing. Uh, and that is in terms of the colour of the young uh, rather than what they actually would be, which is obviously a goldfinch mule. Uh, something else we're going to look at is just bonding tips. Uh, so currently it is uh, the end of October, the start of November, which is when I'm filming this. So it is more, we've just brought the birds through the malt. We're going to start pairing them up now uh, and giving them plenty of time to bond. Then it's going to be looking at conditioning, how we're going to prepare those birds ready to breed and when we expect them to breed. And then from there we have uh, this week's eye catcher, which is actually going to be two new birds I brought in uh, a few weeks ago and uh, they are a bit of something special now. So they are youngsters from uh, a pair that have, have won silver at the World Show, but I'm not going to give you any more than that. So make sure you stay tuned towards the end of the video when we're looking at those birds. So starting out with the goldfinch cock, uh, which I've chosen for the pairing. So I bought this cock bird several weeks ago that you might, you might recall. Uh, so here's a native goldfinch cock, uh, just a standard normal bird, not a pea throat or a chev. Um, he doesn't carry any mutations, so he's just a, an absolute normal goldfinch. Uh, as you can see, he is definitely a yellow bird, or in my opinion, I would say he is, uh, as I have got uh, some Siberian goldfinches where you can quite clearly see where there's a buff. Um, so this is obviously one of the reasons why I chose him, is that he is a yellow bird, so we should get yellow youngsters from him. Uh, he's got a good mask to him and good good black markings around, around the beak and the eyes as well. Uh, so overall, I just think this is quite a good example of a normal native goldfinch, which is why I wanted to do some absolute just standard goldfinch mules. And then maybe next year we look at doing a chev mule. Um, you know, we use a chev uh, native goldfinch, or even we could use these uh, Siberians. If we get a, some young Siberians, we could perhaps get a, a, an agate or a split agate cock as we have got an agate hen, put that to an agate mosaic or something like that and see if we can get some agate youngsters or we could try some blue goldfinch mules so we'd get a white canary hen. Uh, so I do have opportunity for that with a Norwich as I've got a white, um, a blue white variegated Norwich in. So there you are, that is the goldfinch cock I have chosen for the pairing. And this is the canary hen I chose for him. So she is a yellow satinette canary hen. Uh, she is, I believe, an over year bird, uh, as I did want to make sure that I got a definite hen for him. Now you won't recognize this bird as we haven't looked at her before, but I got her from the same breeder as the other satinettes. Uh, and she is a, a definite red eye. If I can just get, there we are, a bit of focus. So she is a definite red eyed canary hen. Uh, and the idea of that is that when you pair red-eyed uh, canaries with goldfinches, you have the opportunity for some, uh, sh should we say, pied or variegated youngsters, as well as clear youngsters. Um, so this is why I chose this hen, is that we've got a red eye, uh, which would be nice if we could produce some clear youngsters, which, uh, you know, which would do good in shows, as well as also something to sell. And just overall, just look nice. Uh, you know, nothing wrong with a, a normal, darker goldfinch mule, but the clears are also really nice and I do, do like very much. So, yeah, there you are. That is a red-eyed satinette canary hen for the goldfinch mule pairing. So, because it's only autumn, uh, it doesn't really matter about keeping the birds in absolute peak condition in terms of fitness. So I don't have to worry about getting the, you know, the pair into a really large cage because I'm not needing to keep them fit right now. What I do want to do is make sure that they don't put on loads of weight, but what I am happy for them to do is put on a bit of fat over the winter to keep them warm and they have the energy stores so that when it comes into the breeding season and uh, you know the cock birds come into condition, then I can put them into a larger cage where he can get fit and then once he's fit, it's onto the canary hen for her to go down. Uh, so I'm going to show you what I've got them in now 
uh, and this is just a temporary place for them until the breeding season. Now this is the cage I've got the pair in for the winter whilst they're bonding. So like I said earlier, what it doesn't matter about is absolute peak fitness um, as it is only autumn. Uh, so the, what I've done here is I do want to make sure that that cock bird is keeping enough weight off him because I don't want him getting too fat and then we, we struggle to get him into condition as I would like him to start slightly earlier than goldfinches usually would. So I'm really aiming for April with this pairing, whereas goldfinches generally start breeding in May. Um, so this is a PVC cage. It is just over two feet long. Uh, these, these cage fronts are, I believe, 14 inch. So we've got at least 28 inches of cage front there, plus a little more. So I'd say, I want to say this is probably about a 30 inch cage. So so two and a half feet long. Um, we've got a perch either side. So we have a perch here and the perch, as you can see the pair sat on there. Uh, and the main idea of that is because I do want to keep those birds active so that you don't put on excessive amounts of weight as well. Uh, as for the water, uh, as you just saw there, uh, I just got them on a, like a, it's just simply um, fresh water. Now, uh, when I give my birds uh, fresh water at least, without any vitamins or supplements in, I want to give them uh, natural rain water because you still have all the minerals in there and we don't have chlorine in there. Now, it is important that you make sure that wherever you're getting the rainwater from, that the source is clean, as you don't want uh, bacteria build up in where you're actually sourcing the water from, because there's no uh, chemicals in there to kill the bacteria. Uh, we've also got them at a bath, as you can see in this bottom corner here, uh, and that is just the bottom of an external bath. Uh, I noticed that the goldfinch cock, at least, wasn't a massive fan of the external baths uh, and it, he wasn't bathing himself and the same went for the canary hen really which is why she's looking a little bit scruffy but she is like just coming to the end of the molt now but she does need a few baths and it's something that she's not done a lot of because she doesn't like the external baths so i've took the bottom out of one put it through the door so they've got a big area to bath as it goes for the diet of the birds currently, I just have them on a standard British finch mix. Uh, nothing nothing uh, too extraordinary. So that is just really just a mix of seeds. Nothing in there that is um, yeah, really of conditioning use. Uh, as I won't start to introduce conditioning seed until probably about February when I put the pair into some larger cages uh, to get them both fit, but mainly that cockbird, just to bring him into condition. Now with goldfinches at least, you know that the cockbird's coming into condition from the black tip on the beak and this uh, this goes in the breeding season so you just have a complete white beak uh, but during or out of the breeding season the tip of their beak is black uh, but it's a good indication on knowing when a bird is fit and ready uh, to fill eggs. Now, in order to keep the pair in good condition, ready for the breeding season, and also just to get them bonding, as you can see at the moment at least, we don't have a, a huge amount of bonding activity. The cockbird just pay attention to the hen, he feeds with her, but doesn't feed her like himself yet. Uh, but you know, they sleep on the same perch at night, and he does show a little bit of interest, and and sort of wags his tail and, and shows off a little bit to the hen. Uh, but really right now he isn't got a, a lot of interest but it's okay because we're only at the end of october start of november and we've got the, 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 probably the best part of six months before we have to be concerned and uh, you know they've got six months to bond so that's really important something else so as long as the food as well as the food i am also giving them diatomaceous earth so that's just to keep on top of any mite, uh, as I do know that obviously, you know, generally birds do carry mite, and it's just something to keep on top of. Every breeder has it, uh, and every bird keeper. So it's it's not something out of the ordinary. So I just want to make sure that all of my birds are healthy. So I give them all diatomaceous earth, and the same goes for this pair. Uh, I give that, them that in a, a separate dish, uh, just it on its own, but I also like to sprinkle a bit on the food just because it's getting it inside the birds, it causes no harm. Uh, and as the birds are ferreting about through the food, they do get it onto their feathers, which is obviously where they might tend to reside. 
Now something that you may notice as well is that I do like to keep my cages clean. So we do have this at the front, but that is literally just from where the birds have chucked sawdust uh, and the, the easy bed, which uh, I give them in the cages on the bottom of the cages in the past day or so. Uh, but the, ultimately the main thing is uh, with keeping birds, but also just bonding those birds is that, that they have no factors that are limiting them from uh, bonding or, or keeping them distracted and we just want to keep those birds bonding. So I spent uh, the whole weekend, um, or you know, two days, the other work, a few days ago now, uh, cleaning every single cage. I had all of the birds out of here. We had disinfectant on all of the cages, brand new, fresh, easy bed in there. Uh, and just, just to keep them in the best condition. So I used a, I believe it's called Flora uh, disinfectant. It's a pet safe disinfectant and just sprayed that around the whole cage. Obviously removed the easy bed and I bagged that up and, and took it and put it in the bin. Uh, and we've got fresh easy bed in there. Uh, I've cleaned all of the drinkers and all of the feeders. Um, you know, just giving them a wipe down with, with some baby wipes. Just to, you know, we just want to keep them clean and keep them in good condition. Um, so that, that's really it for bonding tips on the, the pair. I'm not doing anything extravagant that I wouldn't be doing with any of the other mule pairs. So as you can see here, we have the Siskin mule pair. So this is a Siskin cock. I bred him this year to a Norwich canary hen. Uh, and they're just on the exact same setup as uh, all the goldfinch mule pair. We also have the, uh, the, the the other pair, so we have the green finch, the Norwich green finch pair, so green finch mule pair in the other shed, and the same goes, but that's just with bird keeping, always keep them in um, good condition, and, and I generally do all the same things when it comes to bonding. Now for this pairing in particular, you might be questioning what would be the expected outcomes of the young in terms of colour. Um, so. My full uh, expectation really is that we're going to get sort of the darker, hopefully darker yellow, um, dark yellow birds. Um, and when I say yellow, I mean obviously the colour intensity, so yellow rather than buff, uh, not actually the colour yellow. Uh, so that is, that is my expectation with this pair, um, as generally, because what we have got is just a normal goldfinch cock and a, a, a just a red-eyed satinet canary hen. Now other potentials in there is because we have a hen with red eyes, uh, I do, I, I hope at least, that what we're going to get out from that pair is uh, clear or, or variegated mules. Um, as it goes for clears, clears generally come from chev goldfinches. If you don't know what chev is, it is a, 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 a like a colour, a mutation of uh, native goldfinch and you can, do get it in the Siberians as well. Um, where, where the mask on a normal goldfinch goes all the way around the face and around the beak. On the sheds it goes around the face but tends to cut uh, but like below where their beak is. So you have sort of a white throated goldfinch and uh, they tend to throw most of the, uh, the clears and the variegated. However, it doesn't mean that it is impossible because, you know what, I have chosen the two yellow birds and I did choose a red-eyed canary hen, which was important to me. And um, I got that because it gives us the opportunity. Now, um, as it goes for a sort of a normal coloured goldfinch meal, uh, I wanted to show you a quick example of one. Um, and we'll try and get it from another cage, actually. So this is an example of a sort of normal goldfinch mule, which I, I, I expect to be getting out of this pair. Uh, now something also just to note is that with this bird, she does have white markings. So it is, you know, I guess you could say a lightly variegated um, goldfinch mule there. Uh, but this is a hen, so it's, it's dull in colour as it is, and I haven't colour fed because uh, really it's just a waste on a goldfinch mule hen. Uh, as you can see, that's just sort of a darker bird. Uh, overall, a darker bird. We've got the, you know, the the white on the chest, but that's that's to be expected. And we've got the mask, but it, it, it's an orange mask, so it's nothing that you're going to to think. You know that, that that's something special. This this really isn't. This is just a sort of like a bog standard goldfinch mule hen. Um, 
you know, she does have the colour. Oh, that's a bit of a broken flight there. Um, if we have a look on the other wing then. So she has the colour on the wings, but it, it's so light. So all I've got these for is just as Fosters and in fairness, I am probably going to move these Goldfinch Mule hens on because they aren't any use to me. I'm hoping to get some Canary hens as they, they are more reliable for foster parents. Although the Goldfinch Mules do fine. Um, so that is really my expected um, outcome from this pairing is that we're going to get dark yellow Goldfinch Mules like that. So that's obviously a hen. I'm hoping we're going to get more Cox and hens just because, the, you know, the cock birds are the useful birds in terms of show quality and that they're seeing the hens yeah they're they're a cage filler if you just look into you're not, not looking to breed there's just something nice to look at they go in aviaries and you know i, I know plenty of people who'd, who'd love some goldfinch meals in their aviary uh, at least the hens anyway just to have a look at obviously the cocks are more expensive because of the colour but also the singing ability. Now last year uh, I was actually going to the shows with a goldfinch mule you're seeing now and uh, sadly I lost him over the winter last year. Uh, I'm not yeah, I'm not sure what that was down to. The, he, he was actually in here um, as a, an Avery bird at the time when I lost him. Uh, this was, if, you did, if you've been following the channel along you would know that originally this shed was an Avery this was a sort of a flat that came down and all the birds could fly in there but that was an aviary of mainly uh, spare finches and then cockatiels that had four breeding pairs of cockatiels uh, but I've moved away from that because I prefer just to keep the finches now uh, and mainly the British finches as well as the occasional native sorry as well as the occasional canary native finches the occasional canary uh, and I uh, sadly I lost him, but he was a dark yellow goldfinch mule, which is what I expect to get from this pairing. So there are two main uses of goldfinch mules. The first use being for exhibition. So generally the exhibition birds are, are, are birds that you want to be uh, having the size to and definitely being yellow birds. So my intention with this pair is hopefully to produce some dark yellow goldfinch mules. Um, which would be nice uh, and obviously something that I can take to the shows uh, but the canary hen type it, it isn't there in terms of the size because if you wanted to breed goldfinch mules for exhibition or just mules for exhibition in general you're more looking at Norwich canaries however I felt that especially with a goldfinch uh, gold, uh, you know, and pairing that to a Norwich I've, I've seen the mules and I'm not overly fussed on them. I would rather do the the mule with a sort of a lighter breed of canary. So we do have Norwich hens that I can work with. I'm going to see if I can get one up here now. Yep, there we are. So Norwich hen right there. And um, no, she, nothing wrong with her. She'd be brilliant to have with the goldfinch. But she, one, she hasn't got red eyes, which is something that I did want because I'd like to get some uh, clear or variegated no, goldfinch mules. Um, but also, I just think that the, the, the alternative use of a, a goldfinch mule especially is actually just as a songbird. A lot of people pay a lot of money for a 100% finch noted goldfinch mule. Um, so that is generally uh, just almost just any colour. Uh, it doesn't really matter on colour to a lot of people. What they're looking for is just the, the pure goldfinch song, you know, not influenced by canary. So something I'll be looking to do, especially next year, is when I breed this pair, I want to make sure that wherever I have them, there isn't any cock canaries. Now, whether it'll be in this shed, although I will have the Norwich uh, breeding in these two cages, um, yeah, we'll have to see how the Norwich sings. Norwich don't sing an awful lot, which is why I think they'd be okay. But I have got my other pair of satinets and the fife, uh, and uh, yeah, I'm going to hopefully get a pair of fives for next year. So I'm concerned that that would influence the song, which I would rather be a 100% goldfinch noted song. Um, so that is that is really it for the two uses. Is one for exhibition. They can be ideally yellow birds, but can be clears, variegated, or dark birds. And then there's the songbirds, which 
you know, if you've got the looks of the birds and the song, they're brilliant. There's a lot of people up just for the song, which is why when I'm breeding these, I want to make sure that if, if I breed quite a few birds from them, I don't want to be you know, keeping however many goldfinch meals there, 10, 15 goldfinch meals. I'd rather keep back the best two or three and sell the rest. So I would like to make sure that those birds are worth something and, and people do want those birds. Now the first bird we're going to take a look at, which is this week's eye catcher, is a cinnamon red polecock. Now this bird is a 2020 bird and was bred uh, by a chap who won second at the World Show this year with his cinnamon red pole, so he won a silver at the, the, the Com Show over in, I believe it was Portugal this year. Now I'm not sure if this is a youngster direct uh, from the, the birds that won, uh, but he's definitely, uh, I would say, closely related to those. So I'm really pleased to have this bird on board. Now, as you can see, we've got a, a good mix of colour in there. Uh, yeah, we, we've got a good solid colour across the back, across the wings. Uh, we've got a slight bit of white coming up through the chest, uh, but nothing major and always something that can be worked on. Uh, also, just noting the, the, the more darker brown uh, streaks down the flanks of the bird uh, which which is really something I do like to see because obviously when it comes to the, the general show quality of a red pole it is something we like to see but as well as uh, taking it back to the normal birds is is something there so this bird I'm not sure what who I'll be pairing this to uh, but we will we'll take a look at the options in a future video uh, so obviously he will be next year um, yeah, a breeder for next year and I am really pleased with this and this is a line I have worked with before with the other cinnamon red polecock who we bred two cinnamon hens from this year as well as two normal cocks that are split for cinnamon and split for a gate. And then the second bird. So this is an Isabel red pole. Now this is just a, another mutation of the lesser red pole. And uh, yeah, as you can see, that is a really pale and white bird. Now you might recall that in one of my earlier videos, one of the first videos I did, I had bred uh, two Isabel red pole hens. Now, sadly, they passed because the parents stopped feeding uh, after the cock kept driving the hen to go back down on another pet, set of eggs. So I lost all but two of the youngsters, uh, which were two normals, which I saved, but sadly we lost a young cobalt and a young Isabel. Now this is an Isabel cock who I bought in from the same breeder as the cinnamon. And he is just amazing. I absolutely love this bird. Uh, we've got this really good size there uh, for, you know, in the limits, of the natural limits of the lesser red pole. But also some good shape as we haven't got a really thin bird. We've got a, yeah, yeah, quite a uh, what a well-built, a well-built bird, I guess you could say. Um, and you know that is something that I'm really pleased to have. Now I am having the cinnamon and the Isabel on colour feed right now on Carafil Red, so that is just to check that I have got definite cock birds, as this once again is a uh, youngster, 2020 youngster. So I do want to just check that I've got that correct because uh, this will be a big player in next year's breeding plans, uh, as I do want to start to increase the mutations and bring in uh, obviously some new mutations as well. So this is just a, a, an Isabel, uh, nothing, yeah, no other fancy type of Isabel. Uh, I know that there are uh, double factor Isabels, I believe, as well as pastel Isabels. And I know that a new colour has been bred this year, which is double pastel. Uh, I think it's double pastel, double, fa double factor Isabel, uh, but I would need to check that. So this is just a standard Isabel, but a, a really nice bird. And especially with the cock birds, once they're either an over year bird or they have been colour fed, you get a lovely uh, red chest on them. So uh, I'm really pleased to have this bird and something that I'll be looking for breeding off of next year. Now, I haven't 100% decided who we will be pairing to. I had considered pairing him to the Agate Pastel Hen, 
because we could get Isabel pastels as well as um, you know some, some interesting young combinations. However, I am also tempted to pair him with a cinnamon hen. Uh, so I'm not 100% sure. So whatever you think, please leave in the comments below what bird, uh, what colour hen you think I should pair him with. Uh, and there you are. So that is an Isabel lesser red pot. Now for this week's special mention, I would like to give that out to the Canary Room uh, and that is based on the episode that we saw uh, this weekend actually from what I filmed, uh, what I, I watched uh, and that was Matt Eld uh, and he was presenting obviously uh, but then he was having a talk at Kenny Masterman's and Kenny Masterman is uh, you know, a really good red pole breeder, he keeps a few razzers also the parrotlets, uh, you know for some reason but uh, anyway uh, and, and something that I wanted to share with you guys if you haven't already watched the canary room uh, I, I would definitely recommend so please do go and subscribe to the canary room but a, a big tip that I learned that I thought was absolutely fantastic and I've been doing this for the past couple of day now is a spray bottle and what you do in that is you put water in add a bit of alba soil and I've also added a little bit of mouthwash and the main reason for that is just for the mintiness and you know, you might be thinking, well, why would you do that? And the main idea of this is that it brings all the dust down. So birds carry a lot of dust on their feathers. And especially during the molt, you're looking to do this. But I also saw that it massively improves air quality. Now, something that I like to do in combination with this is I make sure that my doors open so we're getting the airflow through. I have my extractor fan up there. I take this and I have it on the spray end and just spray it throughout the shed, not onto the birds, and just spray it into the air. And it brings any dust that's in the air down, makes the air much fresher, uh, and then as we're moving the air through, it takes any of that dust away and out of the vent, uh, and, and just replaces the fresh air through. So uh, that is a massive tip, and you know, I, I bought this for 80 pence from uh, a shop the other day. Um, just all, a bit of all the soil in there, bit of mouthwash like I'm talking a little bit of mouthwash and the reason I did that is just for the minty freshness no other reason and, and, and then water just spray that in the air brings the dust down and massively improves the air quality so uh, if you aren't subscribed to the canary room please do go and subscribe to them and also follow them on Facebook and like their page uh, but that is my tip for this week is spray bottle all the soil and a bit of mouthwash also, just a quick something to mention because it is important. So entries close on the 31st of October, uh, which I believe is Saturday or Sunday. So either the day this video has been uploaded or the following day, either way, it's this weekend. Um, so the, that's for the Natives and Norwich online show. So please get your entries in if you haven't already uh, for this weekend. And then video entries close on the 7th of November, which I believe is the Sunday again. So um, on Sunday, the 7th of November, then you need to make sure that you have submitted all of your videos before then. I am running the Any Other Variant Canary section, so section four in there, classes one to eight. Um, so I, you know, that's the section I'm running and I will give you your numbers but uh, the same goes for sections one to four um, we've got uh, natives for section one section two is hybrids and mules section three is Norwich section four is any other variant canaries so please get your entries in and I will um, you know the, the competition will start very soon now that brings us to the end of this week's video on goldfinch mules and the preparation we're taking uh, for breeding them next year so if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. It means uh, a lot to me. Obviously, I get to see that you guys are enjoying the videos and it gets you to follow along so you'll see every video that I upload. If you haven't already, again, hit the notification bell so that will notify you every time I upload a new video and hit the like button and share with someone who you think would be interested in their understanding and, and, and looking at how to breed goldfinch meals. Now I will do a, like a, a catch up episode on these guys uh, within the next few months just seeing how all the mules and the hybrid pairs are developing uh, as they're bonding now uh, and and then obviously we'll see them come through into next year so thank you and i'll see you in the next video